Friends, the state of the NFRW is excellent. I stand here proud and humbled. This has been a term that has tested us and brought us back to our essential roots. If ever there was a time when we would be challenged to defend our principles and values, if ever there was a need to dig deep, to use all our resources and create new pathways to accomplish our mission and protect our loved ones and our nation, it has been over these past 20 months. We live in an era when our nation's history is being attacked, erased, and rewritten line by line. We are battling the creeping advances of socialism, disregard for the rule of law and those sworn to protect us, contempt for the sanctity of life, and the attempt to divide Americans by any means necessary. We live in a time when the White House administration is determined to weaken our resolve. We, federated women, have raised our voices. We have taken action. This is our moment in history, the tale of our successes despite extraordinary challenges. The account of how we stood firm will serve as an inspiration for decades to come. Ask me what the NFRW stands for, the National Federation of Republican Women. <laughs> Building leaders, energizing communities, and keeping America strong. This term, our great, this term, our great sisterhood stood together, and we stood tall, advancing our mission, despite fear and uncertainty, despite enduring the hardships and loss from COVID, anarchy in the streets, and natural disasters devastating our lives, despite a Democrat White House and Congress that embraced the radical fringe and not only reversed the successes we enjoyed for four years, but instead presented us with grave, dangerous problems domestically and internationally. We Republican women persevered on our course. We gather here today stronger than ever to celebrate our achievements and reaffirm that we will continue on our path of success. Are you with me? When I stood in front of you just two years ago, I promised that your executive committee and I would not only answer your call to meet NFRW's needs, but that we would exceed them. I made promises to achieve specific goals, and due to all of our extraordinary work, they were surpassed. Achieved in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles that we could not have foreseen at our 40th convention, we increased national dues to fill an acute financial void, but still, the focus of this term had to be on further securing the future of NFRW. That meant taking more necessary steps to reassess the business of our organization and build up every part of NFRW in every way possible. We have not only survived, we have thrived. Every decision this term was made with vigilance and courage and with flexibility since plans would change abruptly. Decisions were made not only in reference to finances and membership, but also to changing political, social, and technological environments. We kept our values and principles, our faith in God and country intact. These critical times called for critical thinking and targeted action. Ladies, we triumphed. Because, as I said on that stage in Indianapolis, and as I still believe in every fiber of my being here in Orlando, our worth together is our greatest asset. As your president, I promised that our goals would be broken down to actionable steps, that the results would be measured and reported to you on a frequent and consistent basis. Done. You deserve to see what we're doing. 
to assess how we're doing it and be part of the solution to propel NFRW forward. Transparency and communication became our mantra. The primary goals of my plan of action were straightforward. Increased numbers of members and clubs. Advanced communications with members, public and the media. Elevate the status of our grassroots efforts. Make NFRW a more robust organization and relevant business entity. So in keeping with the tradition of reporting to you as president, let's see how we're doing. First, membership in clubs, success. Our membership is now over 63,000. The largest number in eight years, 111% above end of last year, and add to that an historic 105 new clubs to bring us over 1,200 clubs nationally. Enormous work by bylaws and membership committee. Kudos to all our states, including 35 above 100% of last year's numbers. However, these are more than numbers. When I sign each and every charter, I look at the map in my office where that new club is located. I envision the new sisters of our family doing their vital parts to keep our nation strong. When COVID hit last year, I stood in front of that very map, concerned about even retaining membership levels and searched for innovative solutions. Then we, we rolled up our sleeves and we worked harder than ever to keep connected and hone our messages. Today, let's celebrate. Next, advanced communications with members, public, and the media. Again, success. Sisters, even when much of our nation was locked down, we refused to be locked out. Our communications at every level skyrocketed. NFRW immediately purchased Zoom rooms for you to keep in touch with meetings and events. You did a tremendous job. NFRW built a new state-of-the-art multimedia production studio. My background in corporate multimedia production came in pretty handy. But I have to admit that until that studio was built, I was recording my weekly fast-forwards from my phone and laptop propped on an upside-down trash basket. <laughs> but we kept in touch. Reporting on your inspirational club and state and committee projects addressing timely political issues immediately. We women do what needs to be done. When we could not meet in person last spring, the NFRW staff and I pivoted in record time and held our first ever virtual board meeting. This past term, ladies, you and I held over one thousand national and state virtual meetings, one million minutes of meeting time in addition to thousands of other club, state, and committee meetings. Wow. I personally hosted over 100 productions and broadcasts, including the new NFRW on the issues, the new monthly breathing, briefing, and the new fast forward. Some of those fast forwards went on the road interviewing our women volunteering in Georgia during the strike forces. Our South Carolina members on the steps of their capital to mark the centennial of the 19th Amendment. And most recently, our Florida host committee during the site visit for this very event. We broadcasted from DC as we rallied for Amy Coney Barrett and from wherever our advocacy and activism took us. In addition to stupendous efforts by our clubs and states. Our national committees help kept engaging us in exciting projects. Our national Americanism, diversity, homeland security, literacy, and program committees hosted virtual shows to enlighten us. When NFRW could not present to the RNC convention, we produced a full-scale virtual show starring NFRW members to commemorate the 19th Amendment. The suffragists 
who founded the NFRW would be proud of you today. Communications increased tremendously. This term alone, NFRW put out over 250 messages, over 9 million individual emails, 85 editions of Capital Connection, press releases, spotlights, action alerts, meeting invites, hard-hitting op-eds, and promos. I represented you and our stance on the national issues at major meetings, including RNC, and on over 20 radio shows and cable and streaming broadcasts, and I have to add a couple more over these past couple of days. As for our social media presence, it increased exponentially. A tremendous PR committee effort, thank you. Our acclaimed campaign management school went virtual with record-breaking numbers of registrants. And another milestone was made with its first hybrid school. So, how are we doing so far, ladies? I think NFRW is rocking it. Now for the third promise, elevating our grassroots efforts. Leadership requires a 24-7 commitment since the events that affect us are not on a set schedule. And with that, congratulations to a term of activism off the charts. 8.2 campaign volunteer hours over the past term. 4 million hours over last cycle. Starting with phone banking for the special congressional elections, we crushed it. NFRW's campaign committee deployed us to an unprecedented nine battleground states in elections 2020, and I joined you on the ground. Despite raging COVID numbers, some volunteers getting sick, a shortage of restaurants forcing us to eat whatever snacks we can find for meals, despite lack of hot water in hotels that weren't open for months, and massive delays with flights, we were not deterred. NFRW helped send a record number of 31 Republican women to the U.S. House and hundreds more on the local and state levels. You gave up your holidays to deploy to Georgia and thousands more phoned during the battleground Georgia effort to save the Senate. In record time, we created a rapid response team Confirm Amy was our battle cry, and you and I carried our message to D.C. throughout the hearings and the votes. We formed coalitions. Thousands signed our petition and contacted key senators up to the 11th hour. We savored victory. Now all eyes are on the gubernatorial races in Virginia and New Jersey. Join our efforts. Watch for the alerts. As for our legislative advocacy, we never stopped for a moment. We never stopped lobbying for school choice, human trafficking, and the regulation Freedom Amendment. NFR warriors became leaders on the front line of the Stop HR1 S1 campaign and became key coalition supporters of the Keep Nine Amendment to stop court packing. When the Capitol was shut down by, excuse me for saying this, Nancy Pelosi, during NFRW Legislative Advocacy Day, we forged ahead with our first ever Legislative Advocacy Boot Camp to rave reviews. Finally, number four, making NFRW a more robust organization and relevant business entity. Every business has a focus. Our focus is our members. I take every one of your dollars to heart. Each dollar you send to NFRW is accounted for, saved, and invested wisely so we can provide the best resources possible to you. You see that in our new monthly transparency reports this term. At the end of this convention, we project our net income will have increased by 140%. For 
From day one, I scrutinized every contract. Business procedures were streamlined. And even with, sorry, Biden inflation, these savings translate into offering more to you without asking more from you financially. My parents were children of the Depression. And from their stories, I learned well how pennies were stretched. NFRW stretched our financial reach by opening up new revenue streams. My new corporate fundraising committee held its first fundraiser, cultivating relationships with entities outside of membership, another one of our goals. Our regions found imaginative fun ways to keep in touch. Our fundraising committee held brand new popular virtual auctions and for this convention, introduced the flight crew ribbons to raise more funds for convention. I love seeing you wear them, thank you. NFRW membership and finances are solid and growing. Our communications, advocacy, and caring efforts are creative, valuable, and impactful. When I began in New York as a GOP leader in public service over four decades ago, there were hardly any women sitting with me as major players in those smoke-filled political rooms. I vowed to help change that. NFRW sisters, the smoke has cleared. NFRW's mission ensures that you, 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 all of us are in those rooms. Today we serve in some of the highest positions in government, civics, business, in all aspects of life. We're sought after for our advice and counsel. And I believe that what also makes us truly special is how we are committed to assist each other, hands-on, in good times, in good times and in times of need, most recently during the aftermath of Hurricane Ida that devastated millions, your caring for America work is admired by so many whose lives you touch. Because of our work, the United States of America, this novel experiment in freedom and individual liberty will continue as a shining beacon of hope, just like you. I was raised to believe in America and not take it for granted. My grandparents and parents served this country. My father on the front lines as a captain battalion surgeon under General Patton's liberating concentration camps. My mother as a Lieutenant JG, occupational therapist in the Navy waves, treating our, treating our soldiers. Children become what they see, that's why I cherish and serve the NFRW alongside you. President Reagan warned that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on. Sisters, who stands ready to keep fighting to protect our freedoms? <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I love you. I love you, sisters. NFRW has been launching leaders for 83 years, and this term, our outstanding clubs and states, each of our exceptional standing and special committees, have taken that objective to new heights. This 41st biennial convention is a celebration of incredible historic milestones and a promise of more to come. I announced on stage two years ago that together we're better. We proved it. And when I look into my grandchildren's eyes, when I hold them close, I know that I am part of an organization dedicated to their futures. That's what NFRW stands for. God bless America. God bless you and the National Federation of Republican Women. You inspire me, dear sisters. Thank you for your tremendous accomplishments. 
please give yourselves a big round of applause.